Cool. So, Ron, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you work on. I've been a cartoonist for over 30 years now. I've done a lot of work for uh, DC Comics, for Dark Horse Comics, some for Image, some for uh, Marvel, a little Friday W. And um, now I'm uh, mostly devoting my efforts to telling the stories of uh, my own creator own comics, uh, Trekker, science fiction series about a young woman who's a bounty hunter and a uh, new book. <laughs> New book, uh, which I'm funding these these uh, books now through uh, Kickstarters, and this one is just coming out, so I'm very excited about that. And uh, I went to the uh, I went to the Joe Kubert School back in the late 1970s. Um, for those of you who may not know who Joe Kubert was, uh, he was a comic book legend, one of the greatest storytellers the medium has seen. And Joe's philosophy uh, and approach to storytelling, which is very very sort of old school, very you know right down the middle of the lane, classic. American Western comic book style uh, storytelling, which is all about clarity and making compelling images, grabbing a reader and pulling them into your story. And as much as possible, that's what I, that's the field that I'm still plowing. Um, European comic approaches are, are sometimes have a different sensibility. There's a little bit more of a distance, sort of a cooler, um, almost a lot of long shots, a little bit more detached in, in a lot of European comics that, I, that I've seen and read. Uh, manga has its own set of storytelling tools and a certain vocabulary too. But a lot of what I'm trying to do, especially in this sort of very basic presentation, is is boil it down to some very basic terms and approaches that I think all of these different schools of storytelling can use pretty effectively. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a little talk and a little demonstration about um, about what the heart of my job is. Um, a comic book artist, uh, it's good to be able to draw really well. Uh, it's nice to be able to show off and impress people with your drawing skills, but the heart of my job is to be a storyteller, a visual storyteller. Um, and that's more about telling a story clearly and compellingly. The ability to draw really well, to me, only counts insofar as it helps me make the story clear and interesting to a reader, so they'll keep reading my story. That's my job. So, a real simple demonstration of some of the basic techniques and approaches in storytelling. Uh, start off with a real simple, basic scenario. Um, something like, uh, there's a couple, and they're driving through a car in the countryside, uh, and they're having a discussion, and then they see something outside the car. Um, and uh, so... What I'm going to do is uh, break that down into a series of simple illustrations. Uh, the first one uh, is an establishing shot. Uh, a lot of these terms are what you hear used by filmmakers, directors, and stuff. Um, establishing shot is what it says. You have a scene, and in the first image, first frame in the movie you see, or the first panel in a comic book, establishes where the action is taking place. It establishes location and setting. So in this case, I have a road and a car. Maybe there's a tree or some rocks here. And then in the distance, some mountains. So in a quick shot, we see a car and the setting for the story. Then in a second panel, um, I'm going to move into a closer shot of this car where I can see part of the windshield and we're looking in through the windshield. Maybe someone's hands on the steering wheel and someone's in the passenger seat. The couple are talking. Um, and then we could have a third panel where Again, the story that we're going through, they see something uh, outside the car that surprised them. So in the third panel, you can just go to a really close shot of maybe just part of one of the characters' faces as they're looking up off panel. Um, the, the reason I've broken down the information in each of these panels this way is if we establish the scene, scene well in that first shot, by the second shot, we can pull into the couple where we can see more details. Is it a man driving and a woman the passenger, vice versa? Are they older or the younger? Are they having an argument? Are they laughing? Are they singing a song they're hearing on the radio together at the same time? Whatever this partic particular story calls for, 
you have enough information in panel one that you can carry it out in, in panel two. And then in panel three, we can move into a close-up of a face which doesn't have a lot of information about the overall story, but we rely on the first two panels to convey that. So in this shot, we pull in close on a face because that's what arrest a reader's attention the most. Uh, we are human beings. We're hardwired to enjoy looking at other people's faces and drawing information from them, how they're feeling, what's going on, that sort of stuff. So um, that's really uh, the quick basics, the basic building blocks that storytellers work with. Long shots, medium shots, close-ups, and focusing the essential details that the story requires in each beat of the story. That's basically storytelling 101. When, when you're a comic book artist and you have an, uh, an entire blank page in front of you, there are millions of options. Uh, and it's really easy to get overwhelmed by those and, can, and you can become paralyzed by them or get lost in the forest. So sometimes taking some of those options intentionally off of your plate um, as an exercise uh, forces you to be creative. Um, and uh, when you're forced to use just regular size panels, you have to be very creative about the compositions you're going to use inside each one of those panels. The two words that I, that I try to convey to people that I talk about storytelling are the story has to be clear and it has to be compelling. And from my point of view, clarity always comes from You can draw individual panels that are wonderfully interesting and complex and evocative and dramatic. But if I put those three of those panels together and I don't know what's going on in the story, that's not doing the job that a comic book artist has, which is to tell the story. I think the, uh, the ideal in, in comic book storytelling is you are telling a story and the reader gets lost in the story that's being told to them. And pretty soon they're unaware of the fact that they're turning pages in a book, that they're deciphering symbols in this panel and making and connecting the dots between what's happening between the two panels to know what's going on. All of that stuff should be effortless and unconscious on the part of That's the reader. That's kind of relating to this question I got, which is hmm. from Jessica. How do I make a good switch in a scene? Basically a transition, I think. For example, from day to evening and from the next day to the well, morning. Well, there's a few good approaches to that. One is um, you could have one panel that is, um, it would be an establishing shot, say, of, say it's the exterior of a house in a prairie or something like that with a bright sun up in the sky, right? Then you can show the exact same panel, except the sun is now down on the horizon. So the shadows are being cast uh, and, and the light is getting dimmer. And uh, if you're doing it in color, you change the colors from bright blue skies to the orange and golden glows of sundown. And then if you want a third transition panel to get it into evening, and the sun is down, the stars are out, that sort of stuff. So you can do it in a series of very similar or even identical shots where you just change, you, you just change the movement of the sun or, or the lighting to show the passage of time. Comics have this wonderful, powerful tool called captions, which, um, which can be overused, used very well and very poorly. But if you, you can have a caption that said, you know, later that day, make that transition happen. There's not any one set way to do it. There's a notion that they use a lot in, uh, I think we get in American comics, uh, decompressed storytelling, which I think uh, comes from manga. I know in one of Scott McCloud's books about comic books, he talks, he, he cites the example that in an American comic book, uh, if you want to show that it's fall, you would draw a picture of, say, a college campus with some trees in the foreground and uh, some orange leaves on them. And the caption would say, fall. And that can be a very small panel in the upper left-hand corner of the first page of your story. And you know that it's fall. And then on panel two of the page one, you're into fall. Kids are walking around on the campus, uh, going to football practice, whatever it is, the story, you write in the story. A decompressed storytelling way to do that same establishing time is you'd start off with a panel of a tree full of leaves. And then over the course of several panels and maybe several pages, you see those, those leaves start to shake in a little breeze. And, and gradually, one at, at a time, leaves will break off from the branches and drift through the sky and swirl around and land down on the ground. And then more leaves will come down on the ground and more. And then finally, you pull back and there's a shot of trees with empty branches and leaves on the ground. And it says, and fall. that might take you five or 10 pages. 
I always feel like I'm missing a few panels when making comics, or maybe I'm drawing the wrong frames. How do I combat this? Just by drawing more comics, better scripts, writing? If it doesn't show, I am very much a beginner. I do thumbnails, but I do have a tough time writing the scripts scenes at times. So my process is I start off with a story outline. Then I will rewrite and rework that. And then I will turn it into a full script. Uh, a full script for those of you who may not know the difference. Um, that's where the script has every panel is broken down. It begins with the description of what I'm going to be showing in the panel. And then it has all the copy, all the dialogue and any captions are all written down on this script. All that is writing. And that happens before I pick up a pencil and start to do this. If I'm doing this before I've got my story written down, <laughs> that's like jumping on the horse and saying giddy up and not knowing where I'm going. Uh, I know I know artists or writer artists that take a different approach there. They're more comfortable with sort of making it up as they go along. I do not operate that way and I don't advocate that. Um, I think I work on my script. I, I am not a comic book artist when I'm writing a script. I'm trying my very best to just be the writer. Now, being a comic book writer means that I'm trying to think visually. I'm trying to write scenes and sequences that a can be drawn and hopefully have some degree of visual interest about them, whether it's just the emotional content of an interaction between two characters or, you know, a Starfleet <laughs> blowing up a planet, whatever. But um, I try to make the story visual interesting as a writer, but that's a certain set of challenges. Drawing it is a different job. And if I've got my script, then right. when I go to drawing, I know how much room I'm going to allow in the panel because the, the, the writing is already done. I, I know that there's plenty of room in this panel to have a caption up here. If I want to have a line of dialogue from a character or two, I can put those in. More room for copy in these panels. And if I've got my script, I know how big I need to make those word balloons and those caption boxes be. So I put the words first. That's the way I learned from Joe. You know, I was given a script for a short little backup story in the book he, he was editing called Sergeant Rock. And as far as Joe was concerned, when he put that script in my hand, that was it. That was like, that was the, the sacred text. And it was my, it was not my job to reinterpret and reshape and restage that script. My job is to tell that story as best as I can. As far as the question of the, was it Jessica who asked the question about what, how to choose which panels to draw and afraid that you might be missing some panels. When I'm looking at my script, um, when I'm writing it out and I figure what's going on in a panel, I, I need to ask myself when I'm turning to draw it, what is the one idea that this panel must contain? What's the one basic idea that means that this panel has to be in the book? Uh, a car is driving through the countryside. That's a short phrase. And that's what this panel is about. There are two people in the car talking. That's what this panel is about. They're surprised by something they see. That's what this panel is about. If other things are going on, a car is driving through the countryside and it's the middle of the afternoon and there are, there are crows in the branches of the trees. I can put those other details in, but those are secondary things. That's not, the, the crows in the tree are not what this panel is about. If they were, my thought press process would have been, and the way I would have written it in the script, crows are, you know, are, are choking the branches of a tree and in the background, a car moves through the countryside. So you've got to organize your thinking when you're, when you're writing your story, when you're coming up to the story you're going to tell, so that you know why you're drawing this panel and what it needs to say. Uh, one other little hint that I'll show that, that I demonstrate in this sequence here, as much as possible, try to keep the action in your comic book moving from left to right, because that's the way we read here in the West. And uh, you'll notice the mangas um, are, are, are right to left, basically, because... That's the way the Japanese language and characters are written out, right? But here in the West, we mostly move from left to right. And if we keep our stories moving that way, readers have an easier time following and transitioning from one panel to the next as well. So I've done three panels here that are also the same size and kind of small panels. What that can often do in a story is it, it, it sort of slows the action down because the readers have to stop and digest the visual information one frame after another. So sometimes you'll see a, 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 an artist who will have a lot of very sort of thin, tall panels next to each other. That's like hitting the slow motion. And then if you want to, instead you want to make a big expansive shot, 
that the reader can take it in with a big instant wallop. <laughs> I might make a big next panel that could be along oh, uh, a long, um, a wide horizontal shot so that I can reveal, I've, I've hopefully built up a little bit of tension or, or curiosity in the reader. What happens next? You know, that's any storyteller. That's the question I want you to have. There's a car riding along in the countryside. You know, why? Where's it going? Who's inside this car? I want you asking questions so you'll wonder what happens next. Oh, these two people are talking. What's their conversation about? Where's this car going? They see something in the sky. What happens next? What do they see? So um, down here, I might have a panel where I could maybe be shooting the shot from behind somebody. Or maybe I could see both of the passengers in the car. And then up ahead, you know, they see whatever they see in the sky a flying saucer, <laughs> uh, an explosion, a glorious flock of geese flying right in front of the car, an eagle soaring in the sky, whatever it is. So one thing you can do is if you, if you do want to uh, open up the Pandora's box of changing your panel sizes and shapes, as much as possible, I try to make those decisions. Again, again, I'm trying to serve the story. So what does the story demand? What, what, best convey what best gives the reader the sort of jolt I want them to have here is it a is it a quiet slowly growing building uh, sense of anticipation or revelation or is it a big spectacular moment this isn't necessarily well it's a spaceship in the sky may be kind of spectacular um, but anyway I try to let the story dictate that uh, by and large if I have a page where there's a a large, dramatic, big action moment. That's a big shot. Uh, and the other panels are, are smaller. They're orchestrated around that. So I can do a page design that way. A lot of pages though, it's about that sort of, there isn't one big crucial moment on the page. It's important for the, for the dynamics and dr drama of the, that scene in a story that each moment on that page has a similar beat, a similar emotional amount of weight, then I might want to keep all the, the panels very similar in size and shape. Let's move on to this next question, which I think is also excellent. Uh, I'm illustrating a short comic for an anthology and some of the pages are rather text heavy. I'm making it work so far, but it requires some creative layouts. How far can an artist push the layout and how far is too far? Well, too far is when the story doesn't work. Um, that's that's a very glib answer, but it's it's what I mean by that is if you push the layout to the point where what you're drawing isn't clear, uh, that's too far. You, you've, got to, you've got to make sure that, that somebody can look at your story and tell what's going the, on. The basic rule of thumb that, again, that goes back to when I was back at the keyword school is, um, well, this page that I've drawn here, it doesn't have any copy written on this page at all right now, but purely visually, we can get the basic gist of what's happening here. The basic, the basic gross actions are, are, are not dependent on dialogue to give me clarity. The dialogue enriches it and gives me more information, but I know there's two people driving along in the car. I know where they're friends, enemies, you know, husband and wife, couple of buddies out for a joyride, whatever. And I know that they're shocked because they see a UFO in the sky. All that is there without a bit of dialogue. So if you've got a story that's choked down with lots and lots of dialogue, and believe me, anybody who's drawn comics for long, we've been there. We've, we feel your pain. If you haven't, if you've written that script yourself, your job is to go back and, and as, as, as they say, kill your babies <laughs> as a writer. Sometimes you say, this story has to work visually, and this amount of copy is dra draining all, any possibility of making you know, visually interesting images out of this. There's just no room for Then you're not doing your job as the writer. So um, being willing to go back there and take out your favorite line of clever dialogue that doesn't really move the story forward. That sort of thing. So I would encourage you to do that, to strike a balance where you're not having, you know, a half of each one of your panels is full of heavy caption boxes and huge word balloons that, that mean you're drawing postage stamp size images. If you don't have the option to, to edit your own story that way, appeal to the writer you're working with or the editor that you're working with and saying, there's, you know, look at, I've laid out these pages and more than half of the page is, is text. 
look at any modern comic that's being well done these days. You're not going to find that in successful comics. But let's just say it's a worst case scenario. Your hands are tied. You've got this script. You don't get paid unless you make sure that every bit of that dialogue is there on that page and you've got very little room to work. Then you just have to make sure to assign responsibly how much room all that copy is going to take for you and realize that even if you've got a, do this where you can see it. Let's say we've got a tall panel here and you've read the script and you know there's going to be a, a caption up here and one person is talking and it's going to take up this much space and another person is talking and it's going to take up that much space. Well, if that's what it is, then you've got this amount of space here. It's not a lot of real estate and every square inch of real estate in a comic book is precious, precious property you have to fight for and milk every last bit of value out of it you can. But if you've got this amount of space to work with, that's what you've got. And your job is to make it work. So you have to ask yourself, what's important about, for instance, let's say there's two people talking here. Have you seen them both before? How much information do you need to give the reader here? Is one of them saying something that's really compelling or, or, or is one character just responding very emotionally? Make sure that that, you know, you've got to find something in this panel that, that, has some sense of drama or visual interest that will hold the reader in the story as much as possible and make sure that that's what, even if I've just got this little amount of space, that's what it's got to be about. Can I do it where this person's head is mostly cropped? I'm seeing maybe the back of an ear and part of a face there. And this other person, it's largely two wide open eyes. Maybe we can show that they're, um, the brow is contracted there. So there's a sense that there could be, or maybe there's a tear going down this person's cheek. No matter how much or how little room you have within a panel to work with, the crucial question I need to ask myself, what is this panel about? What is the thing that I want the reader to um, get beat over the head with about this particular moment? If I can tell that in a way that is clear, they're going to stay in my story. I hope that helps. It's, it's, it's very tough when, when you have to keep finding these challenges in very little space. Uh, before I ask another question, um, Paul Chadwick says, Ron, you just drew an Al Feldstein panel. <laughs> it's funny Paul should mention that because I was, when, 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 I, when I first read this question, I was immediately thinking of EC Comics because EC Comics, for those of you who aren't as old as perhaps Paul and myself, uh, that was a... a a wonderful comics company that was around in the 1950s. A lot of great illustrators, uh, classic artists uh, worked for EC. Uh, and they wrote, they had stories that were very, very dialogue and copy heavy. And what the artist was handed was a, their, their art board had all the panel borders were uh, ruled in in ink already. And all the, all the copy was already dropped in on the panels. So often they'd get a piece of paper that looked like, like this panel was at first, a, a, blank, a blank box that had to be the shape of your panel with all the dialogue already put in it. And often you just have a little bit of space to work in. So that's exactly what I was, uh, what I was going for was the dilemma that some of those EC artists uh, had, had, to, had to face because they were brilliant draftsmen, people like you know Wally Wood and now Williamson, these gorgeous illustrators. And all you wanted to do was a huge drawings of gorgeous people and you know, spotted lizards and spaceships and wonderful stuff from these guys. And often they were having to do it in these little tiny spaces. And it still looked awesome because they, they found ways to, to uh, get the most out of, out of the space they had to work with. <laughs> from Aaron, what do you do if you have many competing ideas for a story and don't know how to proceed? How do you decide and proceed? With me, uh, I'm just thinking that when I'm writing a Trekker story, if I have two or three ideas for a way a scene will go, I will jot them all down as ideas. This is why, this is why uh, I do an I know I often say, when a, when, I, uh, when a professional goes to do a drawing of a human figure, they don't generally start out by drawing, if, if, say I have to draw an entire figure. I don't start off by drawing one eye with all the eyelashes and then I move to the next eye and then the mouth. I do a rough shape for the entire figure first. So I know where it's gonna go. And then I, then I work from the big overall idea and I break it down into, here's the head, here's the torso, here's where the legs are, these are the way the arms are gonna be posed, right? Then I go back and I work on 
blocking out the details and adding it. The last thing I do is drawing the eyelashes on the eyes. Um, and the, the exact same approach is what I take when I'm writing. I do an outline, that's the big one. I will put down three or four ideas. Um, oh, the, this, the, the scene should open this way, or this should be the opening scene, or this should be the opening scene. And I'll write the rest of my outline. And then I'll go back. And once I know how the whole story works out, then I can usually say, this is the open that works best to get me to the end of this story. This is the one that sets the stage the best or sets things up that I know by, by page 12, something's gonna happen and this leads me to that better. You know, don't be committed to writing the story and getting it right the first time. That's what I would say. And also just write, uh, uh, you, you, you know, the, uh, I forget what it is, now, but there's something about that. Uh, you're gonna write a lot of bad stuff before you write the good stuff. So get, start writing the bad stuff down as quickly as possible. Get as much of that bad stuff down as you can. When I'm coming up with a story outline, I just throw the ideas down on the, on the paper and I try not to edit them. Uh, first, I get the ideas down. And once I've gone through the whole outline, I'll go back and rewrite the outline one time, two times, three times until I see that the first scene and the third scene connect well to the 12th scene. Uh, in one way or another. Um, and if I say, oh, there's something really cute that happens there, but what has that really got to do with the story? Is that really helping to get me to where I need to As go? As I say in comics, uh, whether you're telling a five-page story or a 400-page story, I think it's an incredible imposition of me to expect my readers to waste their time right, reading a scene or even a panel that doesn't belong in that story. Uh, so, I, so there, uh, hopefully, that, <laughs> hopefully that helps out a bit. Yeah, we're about two minutes out of time. Ron, thank you so, so much. Sorry we had some technical difficulties. I really appreciate you sticking around. Thank you it. for such great questions, audience. And Ron, thank you so much for taking the time out to impart some basic wisdom on some comics. Thanks, Layla, and thanks everybody for, for, for being part of it. It was great time, great fun for me. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. Ron. See you later. Bye.